name is Nicole Fitzsimons. Really happy to be here and happy to have you all here. I'm going to be talking about games in the ELT classroom. So this is what we're going to be looking at this evening. I'll tell you a bit about myself. Uh, we'll look into the pros of using games in the ELT classroom. We'll then follow up with being careful and overusing them. Then uh, we'll look at how to select games appropriately. And we'll finish off with some games, game ideas that you can hopefully use in your classes. Okay, so just a quick thing about me. I'm originally a became an English teacher about 10 years ago. I started in Bolivia and South America, teaching English to children, teens and adults. Got my cells in Buenos Aires. A few years later, came to Dublin to teach English to adults. Got my Delta Module 1 in London, hoping to get my next two modules done in the near future. And I, my most recent role was uh, working as assistant director of studies at a beautiful school in the heart, at the heart of Dublin, uh, met amazing people and a fantastic experience. So, okay, some of the pros of using games in the ELT classroom. First of all, games work with all age groups. Uh, I remember starting off as a new teacher and having adult groups for the first time and feeling quite intimidated, thinking, oh, adults are probably going to be expecting formal, serious classes. They probably won't enjoy games as much. I was totally wrong. They loved games. They really got into it. And games work with teens, kids, and adults. So don't hesitate to use games just because of the age group. Uh, games make cl classes more memorable. So that learners are having fun. There's lots of different emotions. There, there's adrenaline. There's excitement. So um, it's more likely that they're going to remember your classes and the content, which is great. That's what we're looking for. It helps create rapport with the students. Uh, they're seeing a fun side to you, an upbeat side to you. It increases student motivation. It helps to create better relationships among classmates. And that's something that we should be aiming for because in speaking practices in class, for example, role play, if students don't really get along well together, if they if they don't really know each other, there's friction between them, those activities aren't going to go as well because they're not really going to want to speak to the other person. So if we're helping them form better relationships, those activities are going to go better. They're going to want to speak to their classmates and practice the language more, which is ideal for us. Um, it provides practice for various skills, encourages students to interact and communicate. You're giving them a reason to, to interact and communicate, not just for the sake of practicing English. Uh, it, the games can lighten up intense and in heavy topics. So even for classes such as exam prep, like for IELTS or TOEFL, uh, those classes can be quite heavy, but they you can break up the content with games. You, uh, it lightens up the atmosphere. It keeps students feeling refreshed and motivated. So don't be afraid to use games, even for those types of classes. And overall, it improves students' attentiveness. Even though have, uh, using games in classes have so many uh, benefits, overusing them can have the opposite side effect. So if you're constantly playing the same game over and over again, it can make classes uninteresting, boring, irritating. So the novelty wears off and we want to avoid that. Uh, we want students to be engaged. We want them to have fun. So we can avoid this by mixing it up. You can uh, change the type of game. So you can decide whether one day students are, for this game, they're sitting, they're, they're quite chilled or another game where they're up and they're, they're up and about, they're walking across the classroom they're moving, uh, if they're working in teams, if they're working individually. So uh, we're changing the interaction patterns, um, if, if it's a more upbeat game or not. So we want to mix it up. Uh, you can change the point uh, in your class where you want to, where you want to put the, the game, whether it's in the middle or at the end so, of your class. So uh, doing these simple things can uh, help you to keep students engaged and interested in playing the games that you've planned for them. How to select games appropriately. So 
when you're planning a class and you're considering adding a game, you're, you're, you're thinking about it in your lesson plan, you should reflect on the, on what you're looking to achieve with the activities. So what what's the goal? Are you are you using this game to motivate students? Are you doing it to uh, introduce a topic in a fun way? Are you doing it to uh, practice the target language? So based on what you're looking what you're looking for based on your goal you should try and keep the game and your goal aligned uh, consider the personalities that you have in the classroom so you're the teacher you know your students more than anyone from past experiences do you do you see that they like competitiveness do students do better when they're working in teams or they're working individually do they like really upbeat games do they like more chilled out games so this is a lot of trial and error um, the more you try, you you will find that sweet spot uh, of the games that you're that you know that your students will enjoy. And once you do, you'll you'll, you'll be flying from there. Um, this is an important one. Can all learners in the classroom participate in, in the activity? So in most social groups, you will have natural leaders, and we want to avoid these natural leaders from dominating these activities and the other students dozing off and not really engaged, checking their phones. So try try to make sure that all the students are equally at participating as equally as possible so that they're all getting the benefit of the game. They're all getting that practice. They're all, they're all getting that fun. Is the game time efficient? So you might have really long games planned. You might have a short game planned. Is it convenient to add that to your lesson plan based on on the content of, of what you have what you've got planned beforehand so you, you need to be aware of the of the time of the game does it provide the correct level of challenge so even if on paper on your lesson plan your game looks really interested it really looks really interesting and and you think it's going to go well if the content of it is too easy for your students they're going to get disengaged very quickly because it's not providing them with the challenge that they need at that level. So they won't they won't get the full benefit out of that game. And finally, is it student centered? Remember we want to try to avoid it being teacher student, teacher student. We want students to be interacting with each other as much as possible and we're just facilitating this space. Okay. This is the juicy part of game ideas. So I want to spend as much time of uh, this part as possible, so uh, so that you guys hopefully use some. I, I'm sure some of you already know some of these games, but even if there's one new game here that you can use in your class, I hope that's something you can take away from this talk. Disclaimer: I did not invent these games. Uh, these are games that. I've used personally in the classroom over the years. They, I know they work well. I've had good experiences with them. They've come to me through recommendations from other teachers, through online resources, from TV shows even, and most of them are adaptable. So that, that's what we're looking for. We want to be able to use different types of games at different levels. So starting off with Shark. Shark, I'm gonna be um, changing my quite a lot to show you with the whiteboard and everything so I will uh... okay so I have my mystery word and at the bottom of the whiteboard oh the internet's quite slow so it's coming up quite weird I'll create some C waves and I want to randomly uh, choose a student so uh, I don't want to pick on anyone so I, I usually my personal thing, I do like a rhyme where I do the students. I go, it's it's you, the cat got the flu, the dog got the chicken pox, out goes you. That's what that rhyme they're already hooked. They're like, well, what, what did you just say? Well, um, can you teach us that rhyme? So anyway, I, I pick a person and then I'll draw. The internet is kind of weird, but the drawing is coming out even weirder. If the person has curly hair, I would draw that curly hair just to personalize it a little bit. Oh, I don't know. It's not writing properly. Okay. And I'll write her name, Maria. So, with a different color. Okay. So, I would say, all right, guys, uh, Maria is swimming in the sea, uh, but we need to save her from the shark. 
will save her by guessing the word. Now give me letters, A, B, C, D. So always remember when you have a game, uh, when you're giving instructions, you need to grade the language depending, oh my God, I don't know who's writing on the <laughs> Um, We need to grade our language to, uh, depending on the, the level of our students. So for example, if they say A, I'd go, oh, A is not there. And I'd write A underneath and I'd, go, I'd draw a uh, shark fin and go dirt and at the jaws theme. Uh, they might say E. Oh, correct. E is there. They might say B. Ooh, no B. And they'll draw another fin. Dirt and so the more mistakes they make, uh, the closer the shark gets to Maria. So the whole time I'm going dirt and dirt and and they might eventually guess the word before the shark gets to Maria and they say, oh, teacher, it's English. And that's when I'll draw a bubble around Maria and say, oh, well done, uh, we saved Maria from the shark. Or if they don't guess the word and the shark gets to Maria, I'll <laughs> scribble all over her and say, oh, we didn't get to Maria, the shark ate Maria, and then reveal the word. So it uh, seems childish, but uh, they actually love it um so it's usually uh, a big hit uh okay so now next game okay running dictations uh, sorry Running dictations is a brilliant way to practice listening, speaking, writing, spelling, pronunciation. It has everything and it gets students up and running and very active. So really, really fun. It's also a great way to expose students to uh, the language that you're hoping to cover in that class. So for example, th this is... Uh, these are sentences that I prepared for a class where we were going over uh, infinitives of purpose. So for example, uh, tomorrow morning, I'm going to the gym to stay fit. I'm going to read a book to improve my English. I'm going to visit my friend to give her a present. So uh, write around five sentences, five short sentences before your class and cut them into strips of paper. You will then go to your classroom and stick these pieces of paper around around the classroom, so on different walls. Put your students into pairs and say, student A, get your notebook and your pencil. Student B, stand up and get ready to run. So you'll instruct them so to say, student B, you're going to run to paper number one. You're going to read memorize, go back to stu student A and dictate exactly what it says on paper number one. And it has to be exactly the same. Uh, it has The punctuation needs to be exactly the same. The spelling needs to be correct, everything. So I know we have terrible memories, so you can go back and forth as many times as you want, but you cannot shout from across the classroom. You can't say, Sophie, uh, paper number one. My name is Daniela. No, you need to go to you need to go to that uh, to your partner. When they go to their partner, they cannot touch the paper. They cannot touch the pen, or they can't touch the rubber. So they're only dictating. Uh, if if you're if you're teaching lower levels, you might want to review the alphabet with them, just so that they can spell words correctly. Sometimes they get confused with A E I, for example. Um, you'll want to review punctuation, full stop, comma, exclamation mark. You'll be surprised even at a higher level, sometimes they forget um, words, they forget how to say uh, some parts of punctuation. So when they have finished paper number one, student A will now, sorry, student B will sit down and it will be their turn to write and student A will then run to paper number two. So, and they'll do the same thing. So they have to, they'll be swapping roles throughout the activity. And the goal is 
to finish all of the all of the sentences correctly uh, before the other teams. So that's a running dictation, really fun, uh, highly recommended. Uh, next one, guns, bombs, and angels. This is a quiz, a quiz game. I will send you. A... You weren't supposed to see that gun, so there's supposed to be a circle in front of that gun, but you guys can see the gun. So, oh well. Um, I will send you this grid. Uh, uh, in the chat um, during the break. So, uh, as I said, this is a quiz game, and for our games, we want to keep the prep as minimal as possible for the teachers. So, uh, what I would recommend doing is uh, getting the students to prepare the questions and the answers. You can, this is a brilliant way to review a unit for an end of unit test, for example. So, Divide your students into two teams, team A, team B. Tell team A to prepare questions, maybe from their textbook, the questions and answers from the first two pages, for example, and team B, the second two pages. Once, you've, once each team has prepared their questions and their answers, you'll say, okay, now uh, give your team a name. So let me just write here. For example, koalas and armadillos. The students are usually more creative than I am in making team names. And you'll tell them that each team has five soldiers. And you'll be projecting this um, this grid on your on your board. So hopefully you have a projector in your classroom, and you'll be drawing uh, the the soldiers. You'll be keep, you'll be controlling the points. So koalas will ask the first question to armadillos. If armadillos answer the question correctly, they can then proceed to choose a circle from the grid. So they'll say, for example, three B. Behind what behind these circles, they'll find one of three things. They'll either find a gun, which you can see over here. They might find a bomb. Terrible drawing. I'm sorry. Or they might find an angel. If they get a gun, that's great for them because that means that they can kill a soldier from the other team. If they land on a bomb, oh no, one of their soldiers has just blown up. So they've lost the soldier. If they get if they land on a on an angel, brilliant because they've just gained a soldier. So at the end of the game the the team with the most soldiers wins the game. So this is a great way, instead of just asking basic questions and answers, this gives the element of uh, suspense of even though I got the answer correct, even though we got the answer correct, the team, we might still lose a soldier because we might land on a bomb. So uh, this is just a word document um, and you just, you just click on the circle and, and you delete the circle. Just when you exit the document, don't click save so that you don't have to put the circles back again. So if you if you don't save the document, uh, the circles will come back up. Okay. Next game. Sentence races. So sentence races are also really fun. So you you've got students running around in the classroom again. Uh, this is an example of uh, sentences that I made for this race in a previous class. I, I, I don't even remember <laughs> when I did this. And the topic I believe was uh, to do with eating out. So there are loads of websites online where you can create sentences and 
the the website will jumble up the words for you so you don't have to waste time um, creating these uh, creating the random order create a few sentences and in my lesson plan i know that for this game i want two teams so i'm going to make two copies of these of these sentences and again i'm going to cut my sentences into strips of paper so uh, with my pen here so i would cut them like this. now in the classroom for the game you'll have your teacher's desk and you'll have two piles right far away from each other two piles of these papers you'll put your students into two teams and you'll get the each team to nominate a runner. The runner will literally run to your desk, grab the first piece of paper and run back to their team. And as a team, they need to try and put the sentence in the, in the correct order. The, the runner will then have to show you the, what they think is the correct answer. If the answer is correct, if the sentence is grammatically correct, then uh, they can proceed and take the second sentence. So the goal is to finish all of the sentences before the other team. So they're constantly running between <laughs> each each sentence. Um, okay, then the next game. Um, phrases. Uh, this is a nice one to uh, just review vocabulary. You can put your students into two teams, get them to line up in front of the board, divide the board into two, give each team a marker and say, okay, in 60 seconds, write as many words related to animals, for example. So first person writes an animal and then they'll go to the back of the line and pass the marker and, and so on. So each team has to, um, has to write a, a list of vocabulary based on your, on your topic. And the goal is to, um, beat the other, to, to, write more words on the other team you can decide how strict you want to be with spelling if they spell it wrong you might want to give them just half a point so that that's that's your that's from you <laughs> introduction chain so this is a nice game if you have uh if you have new students joining the course frequently for example in dublin it or in ireland it's very it's very common to have new students enrolling every Monday or every week. So they're constantly meeting new people, lots of new names in the class. So uh, in this game, you're all sitting in a circle and you'll start by saying, my name is, in my case, my name is Nicole and you can choose a top a theme. I want to choose animals. My name is Nicole and I like uh, dogs. The person next to me then has to say, her name is Nicole, she likes dogs. My name is Luca, I like parrots. And then the next person, her name is Nicole, she likes uh, dogs. His name is Luca, he likes uh, parrots. And then my name, so for the first few students, it's gonna be quite easy. For the final students, it's really hard, but they really try, and, they really make an effort to remember each other's names. It's really fun. Um, they usually have terrible memory. Uh, you can apply the rule or enforce the rule of them not repeating animals, so they have to get creative. Or it doesn't have to be animals; it could be anything. Um, okay, I'm trying to do this as fast as possible because I have limited time. Okay, next one: tic tac toe or knots and crosses, if you will. Um, when this eventually loads. Okay, with knots and crosses, on you can just do this on the board. Uh, you can put your grids, and you can get students to copy this. And in each block, oh, it's not writing properly. You'll write a a topic. So family. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not. It's terrible. That's that says weather. <laughs> um, hobbies, and so on. So you'll fill in the the nine. Uh, the nine spaces and you will assign you'll put your students into pairs and assign a time limit so in 60 seconds you have to talk about family 
say as much as you can. It can be it can be about um, experiences. It could be about uh, anecdotes. It could be uh, opinions. Anything. But you need to talk for sixty seconds just about that topic. If they're able to do it, then they can put their naught or their cross with on the topic that they spoke about. And the goal is to do three to get three in a row, either vertically, horizontally, or diagonally. Um okay, then taboo. This is a great one for um more advanced students. So this is the website for it. Uh, there is the part you can cut out cards and you can you can do it this way as well. But if you have a projector in your classroom, you can just use um, use this uh, website. Put your students into two teams. One person from the team needs to put their back to the board, and their team needs to get uh need to get needs to get the person who has their back to the board to guess in this case, the word pretty, without mentioning uh, these taboo words. So they're going to be using synonyms. They're going to be uh, using examples. That they have to be creative with to get to get the point across. To make sure that the other team isn't dozing off and isn't coming disengaged, you can give them the role of policing uh, the team to so make sure that they're not saying the taboo words and that they're not cheating. Um, there's a timer on here, so you will be controlling the points and it's basically how many words they can guess in 60 seconds. Okay, uh, I wish I had more time, but uh, I will be hanging around uh, during the break. Uh, if you have any questions, I did one, two, three, four more games, but uh, not enough time. Just to sum up very quickly, uh, don't underestimate the, the power of working with other teachers. Speak to your colleagues, get ideas from them, get games from them. Uh, they'll know uh, what's uh, worked well with their students, what hasn't worked well. Uh, speak to them and you will constantly learn about new games through other teachers. And that's 30 minutes. Thank you all so much. <laughs> and I will be <laughs> hanging around at the break for any questions and uh for anything yeah thank you thank you lizzie wow thank you so much nicole <laughs> what a loads and loads of amazing ideas crammed in i'm sorry we don't have time for more um if you want to go over the four in the break you're more than welcome if anyone would like to find out about the teaching house delta um then you can pop to my breakout room you should be able to choose um the breakout room um by clicking on the breakout room and selecting. If you'd like to find out more about the CELTA, if you haven't quite taken the plunge and done that course yet, then Nahal will be in the, uh, in the second breakout room. If you'd like to go stretch your legs, grab a drink, please do. And we'll be back here in just over, yeah, just under 15 minutes for Teresa Bestwick um, talking about images for creativity and communication. Can't wait for that one. All right, so I'm going to open the breakout rooms now and I'll see some of you in the Delta room, maybe. Otherwise, I'll see you back here at quarter two. Okay. All right, uh, for those who are hanging around here, uh, I will address some of the questions and the four <laughs> games that I didn't manage to get through. I'm just looking at the chat now. I, I wasn't able to see any of the of the messages. Um, so, so what I'm saying here, personalized, personalized games should be introduced in the classroom. I agree. Bingo also works well to practice vocabulary. Yep, students love bingo. Uh, questions uh da, 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 da. students love running dictation they do I, I i highly agree so students young students they can draw works well with clothing yeah that they yeah student young students love drawing um even with older students you can have um i've played games where 
for example, working with prepositions of place uh, where they have to, if working with student A, student B, student A would have to uh, describe their bedroom and student B would have to draw what the, exactly what the other person says. So um, like the, the bed across from the TV or the laptop. So stuff like that. Um, what were the four games you didn't talk about called yet? So I will share my screen. Okay, so uh, the four games. This take an item to a desert island. Uh, this one came from another teacher. So I think he's here in the in the in the participants who came with us today. Uh, so this game, uh, you are, you will basically tell the students, I'm going to a desert island and I'm taking a banana. You'll look to the student who's next to you if you're sitting in a circle. Uh, what are you taking to the desert island? They might say I'm taking a compass. They might think that I need to take an item that I can use to survive <laughs> the desert island. And you'll say, no, you can't take that, sorry. And then you'll move on to the other student. No explanation, no, no reasoning why they can't take that. But really in your head, you've, you've assigned a rule saying only items that are yellow, for example, can go to the desert island. So the next person might say, uh, "I'm going to. I can. I'm going to take. Um, I don't know. Um, a phone. No, that that's not valid. Next person might say a rubber duck. A rubber duck is yellow. So you'll say yes. So you can take that. That's fine. So the other students will slowly start making the connection. Like why is why why is this yes? Why is this no? And the, they have to try and guess the and what what they can take to the desert island. So they get a bit frustrated at the beginning, but then a lot of it's, they have to think about it a lot. They have to see the connections between things um, and they do actually enjoy it. The next one is a riddle competition. I would recommend this uh, for higher level students. And I usually do uh, riddles um, when it's like holiday season, like Easter. These are my Easter riddles. Uh, there's the teacher's version and then there's the student's version here. So um, basically, if I give you the, if I show you the student's version, you will print one copy of this out. And again, you will cut them into strips of paper, stick them all around the classroom. And students will be working either in pairs or in threes, however you see fit. This is a hard task and it's, this is a time consuming game because riddles, is cha they're challenging. So it, it's not easy, um, but they, they do enjoy the challenge. So they need to solve the riddles and they will go to you, the teacher, after each riddle to see if what they think is the answer is correct. If it's correct, then you will grant them a letter. At the end of all this, there is a mystery word or a mystery phrase that they need to reveal. So I ha this is the teacher's version. I don't know what I'm listening to. Oh my God, that's Alexa. I don't, know, I don't know. Oh, sorry. I don't know if you can hear that. Okay. Um. Anyway, I don't know why that that, that came up. Okay. So, uh, for example, what runs but never moves from the kitchen? For this question, um, a lot of students have said the fridge, um, but some do get the answer and they say the tap. So, if they say if they do say the tap, they say correct. Now, the let the magic letter is. H, we have to whisper it to them because other students are trying to get as many letters as possible 
to reveal the mystery phrase at the end. Uh, I have two hands and a face whenever I smile, a clock. Okay, great. Uh, the letter is A. So at the end, I have, I created um, the phrase happy Easter. I don't know if you can see. Um, H A P P Y, so on, E A S T. So um, they will just have loads of letters and they'll, they'll be sitting together after trying to figure out what the what the phrase is. Very long activity, but uh, it, if if it's something to do with when it's um, for Christmas or um, Christmas or Easter, or something like Halloween, that it, it's a fun activity. Um, beer pong so obviously no beer in the class but um you it's the same kind of idea it's a quiz game again remember we're trying to keep it low prep for the teacher so get the get the students to formulate the questions and the answers based you can use this in preparation for an end of unit test as a revision activity um um you will supply or maybe your school would supply the cups, <laughs> the plastic cups, and a ping pong ball. Uh, so uh, once each team has uh, formulated all of their questions, you'll uh, get, preferably there's a long table. If there's no table, if, they, if you don't have a long table, you can even use the floor, if your students don't mind uh, being on the floor, and get the students to set up their cups. So you can have five cups in a row, or you can get them to, to put their cups kind of like in a triangle shape, however you want. If the student, so if they answer a question correctly, they'll attempt to throw the ball in the cup. If they get, if they eliminate the cup, the other team's cup, then that's a point for, for that team. So you obviously, the, game, the aim of the game is to eliminate as many cups as possible from the other team. And finally, reverse charades. You could play normal charades, that's fine. Um, it's fun, it's uh, almost always used in uh, the old tip classroom. Uh, remix of it, I actually saw this on a TV show, um, is reverse charades. So in reverse charades, the student is, um, okay, for example, let me give the context. The context is hobbies, okay? You've just gone over the topic of hobbies. So you might have gone over um, going to, I don't know, knitting, cooking, uh, fishing, whatever. So uh, when playing charades, student A will need to instruct student B on the actions they need to create with their hands. So student A might say, put your hands together. Okay. Uh, put your hands uh, behind your head. Okay. Throw your hands forward, okay? What action are you doing? And then, then they might say, oh, hopefully they guess fishing. I, I don't know if that, that was a very good example, but in this case, it's fishing, okay? So it's a lot of describing and it, it's challenging, um, but it's it's just a remix of uh, charades. Um, uh, this would work well if you keep the topic quite small um obviously if you're doing any random uh charade then it could it could be anything it, it would be really hard to guess so if you if you've got something if you've just gone over hobbies for example and the they know that they have a limited number of options then um, i think this would work better um yeah it, it's challenging but as well so those were the final few games that I didn't manage to uh, get to. Uh, let me just take the, I will say thank you, thank you, Nicole. A question about using games in a mixed ability classroom. Uh, is your question how to use games or um, in the mixed ability classroom, Jan? Do you have any special recommendations that are good in that situation? Does, does anything come to mind? Sometimes I fill in in a class and there's one very advanced student, one very beginning student, most people are in the middle. <laughs> Just did, did anything come yeah. to mind? 
<laughs> yeah, uh, I guess it's it's tough, but I think most of the games where they're working in teams, for example, if you try to keep the teams uh, as mixed as possible with abilities so that you don't have a very strong team against a very weak team, for example. Um, I, oh, sorry, I don't know why my screen is flashing. Uh, let me just go back to the idea. Yeah, so with most of them, for example, uh, running dictation. With uh, running dictation, I would probably pair up students of similar abilities. Uh, I think here you, there would be less frustration in trying to get the message across. With Guns, Bombs and Angels, because it's big teams, I would use, I would try to keep the team's abilities as mixed as possible and not just have a weak, uh, uh, weak to strong, uh, weak versus strong. But most of them can be quite adapted to, to these mixed, ab mixed level abilities. I hope that answered your question. Uh, can I have a question? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm. I'm actually, you know, like um, kind of lead the uh, teacher team, and uh, you know, like they and I also have a, a really common question is when we when where do you decide to have the game? And uh, it's really hard to keep track of the knowledge or vocabulary or the primer point that the student going to learn. So uh, do you have any activity uh, to reinforce, you know, like the vocabulary or anything after the games? Because like uh, some of my teachers just say that, you know, they're really afraid of giving the games to the student because it's got to be, you know, like time consuming and it go into, you know, like form behind the teaching plans and everything. Uh, I see what you mean, uh, that uh, some games are time consuming and some te teachers uh, might not want to use as many games because of that. Uh, again, I think it depends on the goal of your game. So if you're use, you have to use the game in a, with a specific function, a specific aim in mind, and not just, just to kill time. Um, if they're really practicing the target language, uh, I don't think it's something as like wasted time. For example, sentence races, that's something that could easily be an, a textbook activity, but you're making it more fun. So um, I I hope that answers your question. Uh, I I have to go. <laughs> I think I, I have uh, the, the next person is going to speak now. But um, thank, thank you so much, Nicole. So much. <laughs>